In this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a view editor grid for Airtable using mini extensions. So this is a grid that is that can be publicly editable. So let's go ahead and see the tables in Airtable. So this is my base. I have a seatings table and a brackets table. And let's just start by creating a grid for the seatings table. So to get started, create a portal. Now typically, a portal extension requires a user to be logged in. The way we're, we have set up the view editor in, within the portal is we just take a dummy user, like a fake user, and automatically log anyone who tries to access that portal using that dummy user. So if I go to my uh, base right now, I only have two tables, and the two tables do not include a user's table. So I'm guessing you might be in the same position. So what I will do is I will just create a dummy user's table. This I will not use, right? Like long term, I'm not going to use this at all. But I'm just going to call it users, and I'm just going to create a dummy user. And um, you could lock this if you wanted to to make sure that no one changes it, you know, all that stuff. Uh, so cool. So from here, I'll go back. I'll select this user's table. And you'll see that there's no linked fields found on the user's table. So what this means is, you know how I said I wanted to create a grid of the seatings table? We need a mapping, uh, sorry, we need a link from the user's table to the seatings table in order to be able to create that grid. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'm going to call it seatings and link it. Cool. And then now if I go back, and I can just kind of refresh the table here. Okay, so it looks like because we just added it, I'm gonna have to go back and just start it up again. Cool. So select the seatings, and if you wanted to have multiple grids, you can you can do so. So I'll create this. Okay. Now this is our grid. What the first thing we want to start with is going to the portal settings and then removing the requirement for people to sign in. Once we do that, you'll see the skip login with default user record ID. So this is weird, but essentially we need a record in Airtable that will continue to exist. So make sure you don't delete this record. We need its ID and we just need to act as if when the portal is being used, as if that record is the user who's logged in. So in my table right here, I already create this. There's many ways to get the record ID. One way is to create a formula with the record ID, so I'm just going to do that. And you do record ID, and this. Okay, so this is my record ID. By the way, another way to do a record ID is to copy the URL, and then within the URL you find the REC. That's another way of finding the record ID. Cool. So now we have that. I'm going to go ahead and open up that portal. So now it's a view editor, but you get the point. Cool. So as you can see, I did not have to log in. I automatically got take, taken to the, um, to the grid. And uh, you know, I, I know this says portal here, but this is just the name. You, you, know, you can rename it to be whatever. Um, you, uh, I can be like seating grid, right? Um, in any case, you can now also start you know, customizing the functionality, right? So you can customize uh, which fields are editable, if any. You can customize uh, the logic within this field form, right? So this is a mini extensions form. So it has all the f typical kind of form capabilities and you can uh, yeah, ma make use of that essentially. There are also many features here that you can explore that will add a lot of functionality for, you know, views, filtering, sorting, uh, mo more functionality over what's editable and what's not, customizing the field that show up on the grid, all that kind of stuff. That's it. If you have any questions or if you have any feature requests, please let us know. We'd love to build them.